on that uh, state bank. HB 1309 requires that those who hold tra or transport non-native mineral snakes or constrictors obtain a permit to do so. The bill only regulates snakes that are uh, uh, dangerous to Texans and our ecosystem. Many other non-native species are currently regulated in Texas not only because they may pose a threat to humans, but also because they threaten the stability of our environment and ecosystem. Some examples of other aquatic animals and plants include snakehead eels, certain oysters, certain trout, mitten crabs, certain tilapia, certain shrimp, and all species of ramhorn snails and water spinach. In fact, so many foreign species are potentially destructive in the Texas environment that Texas Parks and Wildlife is preparing a list of species that may be brought into Texas instead of a list of those that cannot be brought in. Be brought in. in addition, many other states have regulated or are regulating non-indigenous snakes. Florida is working to establish a list of reptiles of concern with HB 1505 and Senate Bill 2766. All non-native venomous reptiles and reptiles of concern must be tagged, documented, and permitted under that proposal. Ohio uh, prohibits residents from keeping any poisonous animals and constrictors six feet or larger. Colorado does not allow possession of live venomous snakes for commercial purposes. South Carolina is working to pass a bill that outlaws possession of any venomous snake, snakes and many constrictors after January 1st, 2008, unless you are in possession of the snake at that time. The permit also associated with possession of these snakes is $50 per animal per year. We are working with the substitute, Mr. Chairman, and I'm going to be asking uh, when you, we have a, a, uh, a federal agent that we want, the expert in this area, we want him to talk first and then we want to bring up David Barker. But I want to address the uh, committee substitute that we're developing. Uh, last week we had this bill scheduled for hearing and um, we had a number of people that are here today and others that were here last week that were in an opposition to the bill, many that will still be in opposition to the bill. But we have been uh, referred to one of the opponents of the bill who uh, is well thought of uh, from both sides as someone that could help us uh, come up with a compromise. And, uh, and most of the uh, folks that are collectors and herpetologists are very, well, they're, they've been against the bill, but also they uh, dislike the idea of Parks and Wildlife regulating them. And as you've heard from a previous witness on the on a, on a prior bill, that he uh, talked a little bit about it too, and the, and the history of concern with Parks and Wildlife regulating these issues, and there's an animosity uh, at the department and with these uh, with this uh, hobby and with the and with herpetologists. So we've uh, we've been working on a committee substitute, uh, and we we're going to be bringing that out next week for the committee to see and explain it, but. The committee substitute will encompass the recommendations by uh, the working committee, which is basically being led by David Barker. So we'll ask Kevin to come up in the second line. That committee substitute, which he'll outline the issues that we've identified and what their recommendations of how we address those issues uh, will be. And that uh, substitute will address these issues. Uh, we will. Um, after much research and collaboration with the industry experts, we will modify the bill uh, to hopefully make it much more acceptable to those that are in this, that are herpetologists or hobbyists or collectors of these snakes. The bill will not outlaw possession of snakes. The bill delineates only five species of constrictors, including their subspecies and hybrids instead of all constrictors. That's an issue that may, we, we may, uh, that's actually, that's an issue that's going to be, continue to be in play. We may end up allowing all these snakes to be permitted. That way we can actually know where all of them are and make the, make the punitive part of this for people that aren't complying with the regulations at all and make them outside anybody that's participating in the regulation that would be uh, uh, illegal. And so it'd be an incentive to be permitted instead of trying to stay outside of this, uh, of this proposed law. Uh, states that uh, Texas, it also states that Texas Parks and Wildlife will make regulations governing the permitting application forms, fees, procedures, and reporting and other rules necessary to implement House Bill 1309. We will also, all these things that will require oversight by this committee, we will be doing that during the interim. We'll probably add uh, a request to the speaker to make sure that we're specifically authorized during the interim to not only study this issue further, but also to oversee even more than we normally would uh, and work with these uh, interested parties, these stakeholders, 
to help uh, Parks and Wildlife, help direct and guide Parks and Wildlife in their adoption of rules. Uh, the substitute limits the list of those subject to permitting to zoos, research facilities, and state and county personnel and allows the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department to inspect without warrant the required permit records. Again, some of these things were written in the substitute before we got the final recommendations. I think um, David Bork is going to address some of these issues. So uh, the final committee substitute may include some of these issues. This is kind of the issues we identified last week, some of which will remain in the, in the committee substitute, some of which will be modified, some of which will be removed. This bill prohibits anyone to intentionally, knowingly, recklessly, or with criminal negligence release a captive snake from captivity. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is allowed to contract with experienced professionals to handle snakes regulated by this bill. Personnel legally in possession of the snake will be responsible for the cost associated with removing or handling the snakes. The punishment for not holding a permit is changed to a Class C misdemeanor, but releasing the snake from captivity will result in a Class A misdemeanor. The person who violates the bill will not be allowed to obtain a permit for a period of five years. And those are the kind of issues we're working on. You'll hear more from uh, uh, David Barker and